Hello and welcome to Gardening at 58 North. So in this video I'd like to give you guys an update of the polytunnel again. So it's currently the 9th of July, so it's about a month since I did the last update and as you can see everything has really come on, it's really grown a lot. And we've still got quite a lot left for the growing season so everything's going to get a lot bigger before the end of summer. So starting around here we've still got some excess brassicas and that, they're probably a bit over now for planting in the uh, outdoor area but we'll see, might be able to get some of them away. Also got my frangipani here which is starting to put on some good growth which has been struggling for a while but it's doing quite well now in the poly tunnel. But most of the plants are out of this production area and in this section. So the strawberries are pretty much finished. I think my parents got quite a good crop of strawberries this year. Um, as you can see they're pretty much done. May get a second flush, we'll see. I'm not sure with this variety. So the butternut squash on this side is starting to do much better. Not sure if there's any real fruit starting yet but there's certainly, you can see over there, there's a there's a couple of flowers starting and it's looking quite healthy. It's really spread, it's probably three or four times the size as it was last time I did the update. So it's planted here and you can actually see there is a stem that goes all the way along right to the end here. You can see it just down there so it's really getting quite big. So coming back we've got um, some broccoli here which was just excess, they've just kind of grown over, been harvested a few times, sprouting broccoli, so there's a few, a few broccoli sprouts on it but uh, Generally most of it's already been harvested. And moving along we've got the beetroot here which is just newly planted so that's still quite young. But the sweet corn's really done well recently. You can see here it's probably about seven foot tall, maybe seven and a half foot. Really grown big, got some nice big tassels starting so it's going to fruit soon. You can see there's going to have one, two, probably three corns on that one plant and that's a very healthy looking plant, it's looking pretty good. The other ones which were only planted I think a month ago as, as basically little seedlings are already about two or three foot tall looking very healthy and even the ones further down here that were looking quite unhealthy and were flowering without producing any tassels you even produced their own little tassel there so it looks like that will even have some fruit which is good. So going around we've got some more spinach which is just kind of gone to seed but we can always collect the seed at a later date. We've got the chilli plant that I planted, the same Apache variety as mine but uh, it's kind of struggling at the moment. I think it's getting used to the polytunnel conditions, but it does already have a couple of its own little chilies starting to grow, so looks like it'll do all right. So here we are, some of the um, summer tomatoes are already starting to grow quite well. These are the small kind of like cherry plum tomatoes. I think they're supposed to be orange in color. You can see there's one just starting to ripen up there, but there's quite a lot of setting. Plenty of flowers coming along, so there should be a good crop of them once they started. As I say, it's only just starting the crop, and you can see the lower the lower trusses are well set, upper ones are just starting, Isn't they've just kind of, it looks like they haven't set but I'm pretty sure they have, even though there's not any sign of fruit on these. Yeah, some of them are just starting to come along, you can see there. So some more beetroot down this end, and a few excess cabbages and the like, another squash plant as you can see in the corner. Around here is the shoe fly plant, or the Nicandra physaloides that I sowed last time. And it was absolutely huge, it actually took over this entire corner. It was probably growing right up to this kind of height up here. So my mum had to give it a good hard cut back because the problem was it was really smothering all the basil plants down there. And you see the giant stems on it where it was cut. Also further down here as well. But it's putting out lots of growth still. Um, so it's probably been hacked down to a third of its original size but it's still starting to grow about nice. And the trunk on it at the moment is absolutely massive. Look. See there, hopefully you can see that clearly. Really big trunk, so it's really uh, quite, uh, that's the biggest trunk I've ever seen on a, on a shoe fly plant, so it's doing really well. But I think by the end of summer, this is gonna be a monster again. We're gonna try and keep it a bit more confined up in this section, because it's fine if it fills that section, but as I say, we don't want it filling this area because it'll smother the basil. And we've got here some cobra beans. They've definitely uh, shot up. I think last time I studied, they were basically just little plants down the bottom. But they're a bit later this year, I think maybe a bit late in planting them. And one or two have come susceptible to uh, botrytis. It's just like a black mould, you can see some of the leaves there going mouldy. There's a few other plants in the polyton unfortunately, which are getting mouldy. Just too much humidity I think. I think the humidity is so high just because there's so many plants in here at the moment. And the, the weather's been a bit cool in the last month and very wet. So they've had to keep the doors closed a lot more, so there's not been as much uh, hum uh, moisture being let out of the doors. So the humidity is getting a bit high, it's probably about 100% or something like that. But uh, so that's killing off some of the plants, but most of the plants are doing okay. So yeah, the cobra beans, they're not cropping anything yet, but they are, um, they are flowering, they should be cropping soon. 
can see the first of the bean just starting there, a the little one starting to set. But these should grow most of the summer as it should produce a huge amount of beans. So these are the uh, unusual tomatoes. I'm not sure what variety they are. We've uh, lost the label, but they're very odd because these are the ones that are really stocky, really thick stems. You can see the stems are really gnarly, big stems, the leaves are really close together. But it's got lots of fruit, you can see on the bottom here. There's a really nice, quite long vine there. And we're not sure how big the fruit are going to get. We thought these were just plum tomatoes, but... <clears throat> But the, uh, there's one down here, which is an absolute monster and it's still growing quite fast. So I think that's going to get a good bit bigger before it's ripe. And it's a weird kind of rectangle shape. So I don't really know what kind of tomato that is, but it looks like that's the size they're going to get. There's another quite big one up there. So it's going to have a very heavy crop of giant, giant strange looking tomatoes. But I'll be interested to see what they're like when they're finished. Over here we have some more beetroot again. Just quite young seedlings more tomatoes. These tomatoes seem to be cropping very heavily as well. You can see on the lower trusses which are, are ripening up first you've got loads of tomatoes, really quite heavy vines of them here, here, here. We've got some more on this section as well and all these other ones are absolutely covered in tomatoes so there's going to be hundreds from these by the looks of things. And then on the left here we've got the squash plant which has grown absolutely huge. You can see it's taken over this whole section. Now it probably would have taken over half the polyton if it wasn't for the fact that all the, the stems that come across the path and try and escape down the other sides we keep cutting off to stop it getting too big but uh, you can see it's even starting to climb up the sides of the polyton now and it's getting a lot of fruit as well you can see there's there's one just down there but the section up here is where most of them seem to be clustered it's also where the largest ones are so you can see there we've got quite a big one that's already set, put my hand next to it as a comparison it's quite a big one. We've also got a couple more down there, that one over there and I think there's a lot more hiding in here as I say it's hard to to really see because it's so so busy in here with all the leaves and everything like that. So back around here we've got um, some more basil and uh, an eggplant or aubergine. Aubergine is still a bit small not sure why it's struggling so much and this is unfortunately needs to come to mold this basil because it's just got too humid. But the other basil is looking very really healthy and happy, so I don't know what it is, but a lot of the, I'd say some of the plants are just dying off because it's getting too humid in here. And then around this side we've got the Tigerella tomatoes. These are the ones that have really grown the biggest. You can see up there, that's almost up to seven foot probably, that one. So what we're going to do now is train it between the bar here and cross polywood cables onto the bar here so we can get some more cropping area. And if you, even if it shades the basil, it won't be a big issue. Though it's not ideal if we say the, the aubergine down here. This is also cropping really well. You can see the tigerella, absolutely loads and loads of striped fruits on them, all the way down to the bottom of the plants, really hanging in. And up here, there's lots of trusses which are just starting to set, but these up here will look like these down here soon, just absolutely cut. Once these are harvested, that massive concentration of fruit will just be higher up on the plant and they're all harvesting very well. They're quite good size as well, you can see here. They're really big tomatoes. That one there is just starting to get ripe. As I say, it's kind of like red with um, orange stripes when it's finished. But um, yeah, they're quite interesting looking. You can just see it's going to be a very big bumper crop by the looks of things. And then around this side is the cucumber plant. I'll actually take you around the other side of it because it's a bit easier to see the fruit from the other side, I think. So here we are around the other side, you can see there's a very big cucumber here, this is setting nice. I think my parents have already harvested quite a good number of uh, cucumbers from this plant. There's another one down there as well. You can see we've got one hanging up here. Some further ones down there, kind of hard to show. As I say, this is cropping really, really well now. I think they're maybe getting two cucumbers a week and they're about a foot long each time. So. You know, they're even bigger than this one here when they're, when they're ripe, so it's really cropping well. The peppers in this section are a little bit crowded out by it, so I'm not sure how well they're going to crop, but we'll just see. And we do need to be careful because this is also succumbing to some of the humidity. You can see there it's getting a bit mouldy in places, so hopefully the weather warms up. <clears throat> they can open the, the doors a bit more and get this humidity a bit lower. So coming to the end of the button off squash section we've got the 
sweet potatoes. They're getting a bit crowded out, but hopefully they're going to climb up here a bit more. You can see they're already climbing up quite well. And there's a, a real good growth on them. They're really getting quite vigorous. So hopefully they will cover most of this section of the floor here. The uh, radishes here will be harvested before it really grows into that area. And the beetroot should be harvested within a few weeks. And by that time, hopefully the sweet potato will have space to come all the way up to the bottom of the path here. And we'll see how good it crops. Never tried it here in Scotland, we'll just see how it does. We've got a few more tomatoes here. These ones, for some reason, have got a, little, a, lot, of, a lot of leaf coat curl. I'm not sure why, but it doesn't seem to have har har harmed them too much. They're still doing pretty well. They're getting some good crops on the, on the lower sections of the plants, but they're not cropping as well as the other ones, as the other tomatoes, but they're still getting some good ripe ones. There you can see these are pretty much ripe already. These are yellow... Uh, yellow baby plums so they that's what they look like when they're pretty much ripe and then finally at the front here we have the pepper plants we've already harvested one pepper but there's plenty more coming and they're quite big robust plants we haven't trained them into cordons um i mean that's probably the way a lot of people do it just to get a really giant big fruits but my parents just left it to grow kind of wild and you can see here there's a really good selection of fruit Got some ones up here, and th these ones are strange, they seem to point upwards, these bell peppers, so even with the weight of them, we harvested one from here, and it was quite a big pepper, but it was still, the stem was strong enough they could hold it upright, even though it was almost ripe. And then these other ones here, you can see, absolutely covered in peppers, a bit of the brown is just the old petals, they'll rub off, so it's not an, an issue, and you can see here again, we've got plenty of flowers in there, and a couple of peppers starting to form. Same with the one at the back there. And then the sweet peas here. Apparently my mother's now getting about 60 flowers a day, which is absolutely crazy. I think she's harvested it this morning or last night, so there's not many flowers on at the moment, but it's really grown and covered this whole area. And as long as we keep deadheading it, we need to take off some of these seed pods. As long as we do that, it should keep flowering um, for most of the summer and even into autumn. So this is the greenhouse now. <laughs> Things are a little bit slow in the greenhouse, generally, Things don't seem to grow quite as well in our greenhouse as they grow in the polytunnel. I think the temperature fluctuations are a lot bigger and the soil as well. We haven't got the soil quite as good a condition, but it's doing quite well. Um, <clears throat> starting here, we've got some tomato plants. You can just see the tomato plants are generally a lot, a lot smaller, less stocky. Same with the ones over here, a lot smaller, less healthy than the ones in the polytunnel. I think there's less feed that they've been given in the soil here, as I say. It's very dusty, it hasn't been improved like the soil in the polytunnel has. Um, you can see the crop though, it's quite good. You've got quite a lot of tomatoes here. Down here there's quite a bit of tomatoes coming as well. So even, even though it's struggling a bit, there should still be a good crop of tomatoes. And the aubergines over here, still not doing great. As I say, they just don't seem to grow very well in Scotland. I think the sun's not strong enough or the temperature's not high enough. But you can see this one here at the back. It's doing quite well, it's got quite dark leaves and it's looking healthy. The other ones are still a bit anemic, a bit yellow looking. But it's getting some flowers, so I'm hoping that they'll hopefully get a few cropped by the end of summer. It's still got a couple of months of good weather hopefully, so that'll hopefully do alright. No change in the cycad here, it hasn't grown any new leaves this summer, not sure if it will or not. But the lemon verbena here has gone absolutely mad, you can see how big it is. It's, my mum keeps cropping it, keeps cutting bits back, but it just keeps growing. So that's a really vigorous plant, really loves the conditions here in the um, in the greenhouse. Then further around here you can see more tomatoes and finally ending up with the courgettes. So they're still not having a huge amount of courgettes coming on the plants, I'm not sure why. Um, but they are doing better than they were in the previous update. You can see there's, there's a couple of courgettes down there. Kind of hard to show on the camera I think. I'll just show you these tomatoes down here. They've got quite big tomatoes now, looking really quite healthy. Lovely green colour. No hurts. They should be reddening up soon because they're about the same, the right size for when they're they're ready. And as I say here again, I'll just take the seeds off so you can, the uh, flower head so you can see better. Got some courgettes there further around, but as I say, they're not that big. They just seem to struggle to fatten up. But hopefully, they'll fatten up soon. And lastly, we have the very strange sunflower here, which is self-seeded. I'll have to walk quite far back to see the whole of it. So it goes right up to the top of the greenhouse now. It's quite a monster. It's just a self-seeded one, but it's just love the conditions in here because it's so hot. And as you can see, it's done really well. 
But the, the weird thing about it is the stem, as you can see here, it kind of flattens out and it's absolutely enormous that stem. As you compare to my hand, it's really, really thick. It's quite thin on this side, but then it's much thicker on this side. And it's just an absolute monster of a stem in the sunflower. And as you can see, it's looking very healthy at the moment. So what we're gonna do is it's pretty much the top of the greenhouse. Is hopefully bend it and get it growing out that little hole in the greenhouse over there. There's a gap in the glass here, so then I'll be able to grow outside, but yeah, it's doing really well. We have to keep loosening the string here because it's growing so fast that it's uh, even starting to dig into it already. So I think that's all for the greenhouse and polytunnel tour. tour. Hopefully I'll uh, do an update in a, in a month or two's time when I'm next back up. But everything's really shot on, even though the weather's been quite cold this June, it's been very wet June. Everything's still growing quite well in the polytunnel. As I say, hopefully July will be much better. It's now the first week of July. It's still been quite wet and cool, but hopefully July and August will be a lot warmer and drier. And that way this humidity won't be so much of a problem and the plants should put on a really good heavy harvest.